Wojciech Smazowski's clergy opens from a quote from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inside are predatory wolves. The film indeed will be largely an investigation into which of the characters portrayed as a true priest, who is only a little lost and who is a dangerous predator disguised as a lamb. Made in 2018, Clergy is probably Smazyowski's most predacious film, and we talk about the director whose images always arouse strong emotions and lead the box office. Clergy was seen by almost a million viewers in cinemas during the opening weekend alone. Then the number rose to a staggering five million. Smazyowski is often said to have portrayed the worst of Polish people and can point out their national weaknesses like no one else. It's no different in clergy, where he does not fall to his knees when talking about the priesthood. He continues the veracity of his poetic devices, symbolized by an axe and a cesspool, booze, pickled cucumbers, the latter are only really common in this time. In spite of this blutitude, almost every one of the priests portrayed in this film has something nice about them no matter what his crime is, but they still have more guilty conscience. A village parson played by Robert Veskiewicz collects donations from the believers to renovate the church, but then drinks them to the last penny. He also has a lover, played by Joanna Kulig, who has just got pregnant. Highly placed in Krakow, Father Lizowski, played by Jacek Braszak, dreams about the Vatican while playing out the world of business, media and politics. He will not retreat from anything to get a promotion. On the other hand, the good priest Kakua, played by Arkadiusz Jakubik, under the influence of disturbing events, starts to lose his faith. There are three buddies from the seminary who meet every year for a libation to celebrate the anniversary of the former church fire from which they managed to escape. There is also the Archbishop of Krakow, a Sybarite, a politician, a businessman, a real godfather, played by Janusz Gajusz, one of the most important contemporary Polish actors. In this role, he compiled the features of several well-known and well-founded Polish hierarchs and gave a bold performance. This must have aroused not only the audience's interest, but also numerous protests from Catholic circles. Because Mazowiecki's shows here are dark practices, priests. Alcohol and drink driving. Nepotism. Extortion of money from the faithful. Blackmail, corruption, supporting nationalist militias, sexual excesses, including pedophilia. Clergy is a kind of cry for reform of the Polish church, which is nearly lost, not only to abolish celibacy, but also the increase of secular control over the clergy to make finances transparent, to stop abuses of power and influence, especially on state structures and education. One of the most popular and respected directors of Poland, Smazowski always looked for strong themes. In Traffic Department, he showed the drunkenness of police. In The Dark Horse, domestic violence. And in The Wedding, the hypocrisy of the Polish family. He was also not afraid of difficult historical subjects. In Rose, he talked about the post-war expulsion of the Mazurians. And in Wołyn, about complicated Polish-Ukrainian relations during the Second World War, which resulted in pogroms. In each of his films, a director gives the audience an unvarnished truth. He does not spare anyone, nor take prisoners. Also, clergy has its funny moments. It's a proposal for viewers with strong nerves. It's particularly moving when showing the problem of paedophilia in a Polish church. Recently, it's been presented in other Polish titles. The phenomenon turned out to be a crowdfunding documentary by brothers Tomasz and Marek Szekelszczy called Just Don't Tell Anyone, which became the most popular film of Polish YouTube in 2019. Recently, the filmmaker showed a second part, also devoted to sexual exploitation of minors by the clergy, called Hide and Seek. Unlike Szekelszczy, however, Smazowski explores more the very mechanisms of wealth accumulation, relating to celibacy, the creation of opaque relations between the state and church, or the removal of clergy from law than specific people. The topic of Polish religiousness has often appeared on Polish screens recently, and in very different ways. A lot of religious films are made and are doing well. Broken Ear of Corn, produced by the media empire owned by fundamentalist Father Ryczyk, is an attempt to transplant the Christian films popular in the USA into Polish ground. The Oscar-nominated Corpus Christi became a great success last year. The film by Jan Komosa tells the story of a boy from a reformatory who impersonates a priest and strangely he heals relations in a village in eastern Poland. The film was appreciated by both progressive and conservative critics. 
The latter, in fact, gets a lot more sympathetic to the church than Smazowski proposes. The phenomenon of Polish religiousness was developed, for example, by the television broadcasting series with a criminal thrill such as Vicarage or Father Matthew. It's a remake of the Italian Don Matteo series. Since the 1990s, works of art that express the fascination of faith, such as Faustina, or the primate three years of the millennium, have been produced with pleasure. The trend intensified after the death of Pope John Paul II. There was even talk of so-called papal cinema, which represented films co-produced with Italy, such as Carol, the man who became Pope, and Carol, the Pope, who remained a man. They broke box office records in Poland. Films devoted to nuns are a separate phenomenon. It's hard not to remember the masterpiece of the so-called Polish school, Mother Joan of the Angels, by Jerzy Kawerowicz. This visually stunning film, based on a short story by Jaroslav Iwaszkiewicz, inspired Ken Russell to create famous scandalous The Devils in the 1970s and resonated in Poland as well. Barbara Sass filmed In the Name of the Devil about a monastic revolt, and French director Anna Fontaine has produced her award-winning The Innocents with a Polish cast, which tells the story of Soviet soldiers raping nuns during World War II. These films, combining the religious and sexual sphere, aroused numerous controversies. But the religious subject matter in Polish films does not always come to light by showing the figures of clergy. Often the theme of Polish religiousness, Christian heritage, and its influence, on the screen reality appears in a more subtle way. This is the case with Krzysztof Sanusi. Most of the films have the structure of a religious triest. And yet also with Krzysztof Kieślowski, his famous Decalogue cannot be fully understood without knowing the Ten Commandments that inspired this legendary director. However, 30 years have passed since then, and the cinema is still exploring the paths of Polish spirituality. Sometimes in the case of clergy, they prove that one turns a problematic morality into a superficial idolatry. It can lead to very dangerous areas.